Hello there, I'm Machine Dana. I hope you guys are doing really, really well. In this video, I'm going to be showing you exactly how you can set up Source Switcher. Now, Source Switcher is a really cool plugin for OBS Studio, and it allows you to basically rotate one or two or loads of different sources for your stream. The application I'm going to be showing this for today, because I've done videos previously on donation goals, bits goals, follower goals, and things like that, is switching between different goals in the same placeholder space, but they're just following goals and donation goals and things like that and obviously that's very useful but I'm sure you can come up with some really really imaginative ways to use source switcher to replace different sources in the same space it looks really really cool there's loads of different applications for this and I really can't wait to make the most of this amazing plugin so what to expect in the video basically I'm going to link below the videos to the different ways of setting up different goals on your stream I'm then going to go through the process of basically just linking those different goals within the different sources I'll do that very very briefly within the video, but then I'll show you the settings for Source Switcher, how to configure it, how to make the most of it, and how to get the best from it. I've also got a video, and I'll link it below, of how to install OBS Studio plugins. So if you're having trouble installing this plugin, just check out that video below. As always, if you find it useful, I'd really appreciate a like on the video. Apparently, YouTube's algorithm likes that. If you want more of my content, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Feel free to check me out at twitch.tv forward slash machine Dana if you want to come and hang out with us. And yeah, let's do this. Okay, for the source switcher, we're going to be using the source switcher plugin from OBS Studio. I'll link in the description below where you can find this. You can download the code base here, so on and so forth. There's a different version history, all that kind of stuff. You also need to install the Visual C++ redistributables here. As mentioned, I have got a separate video on how to install plugins for OBS Studio, so I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but it does look like there's a pretty good installer available here, so I'm going to go with the latest version of the Windows installer. Download this. This will keep here. We want to move the application. We'll cut it from there, and we'll plop it in the downloads folder here. The install should do all the work now. It's going to choose for me the default location for OBS Studios, but if you have changed your folder for OBS Studio, you'll need to point it in the direction of that. Again, follow the link in the description for the plugins installation guide for a bit more detail on exactly how you can do that. That's now completed set. So we're installing the redistributables right now. Agree to the license install. Let's go. Let's go. You will need to restart your computer and therefore also OBS Studio enable to allow this to happen as well. So yeah, I'm going to have to stop recording and then re-record because <laughs> I'm in OBS right now and I'm also recording on the PC that... Yeah, I'll, I'll see in a second. <laughs> okay, so I'm here after the restart. I've already checked in OBS Studio. I can see that Source Switcher is available now as a source for me to select and I'll show you that in just a second. What I just want to quickly show here, there is a source code GitHub here and I think there'll probably be a... Yeah, from Exceldro here. He'll probably have a Discord group or something like that. So I'm sure he won't mind you reaching out to him if you do have any particular issues. But obviously first check here if you are having any particular issues with this. So what I've done to prep for this, because I've already done videos about follower goals, bits goals, and all that kind of stuff. One of the applications I wanted to use here was using the source switcher to rotate multiple goals in the same place. That's my application that I want to use this for, for like, I don't know, like a 24-hour stream or something like that. So I've prepared a few different goals. <laughs> this is my naked stream sub goal. So far, I'm 1,200 subs into a 2,000 sub goal. For the naked stream, of course, you got a follower goal here. I will buy a puppy when we get to 2,000 followers, and we've already hit the quit Twitch goal, but I'm going to put it on there anyway, uh, so I will be quitting Twitch because this goal has been met. The reason why this is important is because I'm going to copy the URL for these within Streamlabs, and these are going to be my three sources that I'm going to be rotating. So I need to make sure that those sources are at least available somewhere within my OBS Studio. So I'm here now in OBS Studio. We can see when we click the plus icon, we now have Source Switcher. I'm going to click on that now. We're just going to call this Source Switcher Goals for now in capitals. Now, things to note here is you can't just add in new sources that don't exist elsewhere in your OBS Studios in here. The source has to exist somewhere for it to switch between different sources, if that makes sense. But you can use the full spectrum, the full gambit of different sources to switch between. And that includes different sizes and things like that. I'm just going to opt to use one that is sized within a certain panel size that I'm going to basically measure and get right to the perfect size. Just for my OCD, to be honest. But 
but it just makes it look a lot more tidy on stream as well. So I don't have those sources added here, so I'm quickly going to add those three goals to the stream. So I'll just click OK on this for now, and we'll just leave this source switcher here hidden. Now, I don't know why there's not been like a drop down box that's been included within source switcher, but don't worry too much about that. Just keep the names of the sources that you want to add in here fairly simple and straightforward. For example, I'm going to call this sub goal with no extra space at the end, a capital G there and a capital S at the start. And I'll do the same with follower goal and bits goal as well. But we'll need those names because that's what we're then going to type into source switcher when we want to add them to switch them around. Now, as I'm adding a browser source here, I'm able to define the width and the height here. But another way of doing this, if you want to really specifically specify the specifics of the specific transformation, you can right click, you can go into transform and you can go to edit transform. And this will allow you to edit the very finer points of the width and the height and the positioning and everything else. So position, rotation, size, all that kind of stuff. Again, taking real care to make sure I'm getting the spelling right here. Follow a goal with caps at the start and the end. But for you, it doesn't matter as long as you just know what the name of those sources are. Right, so you can now see here I've got a bits goal, follow a goal, and sub goal. Now, just to show the eyeball tool here, I'm making them not visible so you can see they're all in the perfectly correct position. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. It's just there's no point in moving in if you're relatively happy with the size of them. So bearing in mind, you can resize source switcher as well at a later stage, and you can define some of these things. So don't worry too much about the finer points of sizing at this stage. So I'm just going to unhide all three of those sources now, and I know the name of them. I'm now going to double click back into source switcher, which I left empty earlier. And I'm just going to add the sources by clicking the plus icon, sub goal. I'm going to add another one called follower goal. So you'll know if it's worked because it will appear. And we could change the order of these. So I'm going to click follower goal as an example and select that to the top. Now I've got bits go in there as well. So I'm just going to quickly run through some of the options that you get with Source Switcher. You can loop it, of course. I'm going to have this on a looping routine. But another option here is you can just have really, really long durations between the rotations, if that makes sense. This is in milliseconds, so the time to switch. So 5,000 milliseconds is five seconds. I don't know what the maximum is here, but you can set it to time. But of course, if you just want a regular loop of these sources, you can just have it on loop. But you can add loads of different sources. I've not tested how many, but I I suspect you could probably have 20, 30, 40 sources here. And of course, you can use this for all kinds of different applications that you may want to use it for. For example, sponsorship images or videos or scenes or all kinds of different things that you might want to use, different creative ways of doing this. So I'm going to leave that on loop for now. I'm going to have a time switch and I'm just going to switch it every four seconds. So 4,000 milliseconds. And we're going to switch to, you could choose whether you switch to next, previous, first, last or random. I mean, that's quite interesting if you're playing games on stream. You could have it, for example, where you've got 20 or 30 different sources there with challenges cards, you select a random challenge card that will just appear using this source switcher here. We're already getting a preview of how this works, which is pretty cool. It seems to be working pretty fine. I'm just going to switch it to next for now because that makes sense for this particular goal. Don't worry if it looks like it's glitching out a little bit here. Now, there's a media state switch here as well. I don't know why it's got a spelling error here. When you click a media state switch, what that does is the state of the media then determines when the switch is made, if that makes sense. So, for example, if you had a video, when the media media has ended, you may then want it to switch to the next source, or if there's an error in the particular source, it would then switch to the next one, and so on and so forth. So there's different options here you can go with. It's not relevant for me in this particular goal, but you may want to use this in different ways. And again, you've got the same five options, random, next, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to turn off media switch state there. Got an option to choose the transition type here, so that's just what it actually looks like. I really like motion. So I'll just stick with the motion switch for now. You then get options for whatever type that you go for. So for example, the duration of the actual motion itself. Now, I want this to be quite quick here. So I'm going to put this to 500 milliseconds, half a second. In fact, 300 milliseconds, really, really quick. So it switches in really, really quickly in the motion. We've got some scaling options here as well. Aspect ratio locked or max only. So it'll only be to the maximum size of the source or to stretch if you want that to happen as well. For example, if you wanted it to stretch to the side of the screen, most people are going to be wanting to use aspect ratio or max only here, assuming that you've already got the size of the source correct in OBS when we set them up earlier, if that makes sense. I'm just going to keep it to aspect for now because I know that they're all sized to the same size for me. And we can also choose to align the sources as well at this point. Aligning to center works fine for me. Now we can choose to kind of change the motion of how the source comes in here, kind of like the linearness of it. I'm going to leave these at zero and zero, but all this would do is create like a slight curve on the motion of how the source actually comes into play. So it will accelerate for example, if you accelerate the x-axis, it'll go up 
quicker and slow to the right rather than it going kind of in, in an equal distance. Hopefully that makes sense. This isn't a physics tutorial. I'm not actually sure what the current source file does. I guess this would probably read the most current source or it would read maybe a particular file to be able to display whatever is in that file at the time. So in other words, you've got like a kind of like a file folder and you could dump different sources, media sources, images, video, stuff like that in a file and it would read from that file and then it would do a read interval, show it every now and then. So if you've got new data coming into that folder, then it would use this to read that data and then switch out the interval that you've defined it as and in the manner that you've defined it as. If that is what it is, and I think I'm pretty correct on this, that's a really good tool because it means that you're able to use it in so many more different dynamic ways. So I'm going to click OK with this now. Now the source switch is not actually live at the moment, as we can see in the top left hand corner. If I now turn this on, you should see we go from follow a goal because soon I'll be doing a naked stream, TOS. Now, the reason why that's covering like that is because it switched through the three sources there. So this is working perfectly. It's, it's because of the amount of text on the actual source itself. It's nothing to do with this plugin. But the good thing now is now that we've got the source switcher set up as a panel, we can manipulate this however we want to do. For example, I just want to pop it under here, under the cam. So now I can see that bit goal below seems to be working absolutely fine. I've resized it. It looks a lot more tidy. It's not taking up loads of clutter on my screen. If you want to check out the follower goal, bits goal, donation goal, subscribe a goal in the description below. Feel free to do that. Some of those videos are really old, by the way. So one or two of those are like when I was a total potato on camera, but some of them are a little bit more recent. The reason why I've done the more recent ones was specifically so I could get this particular video out. I don't know about you guys, but I really, really like this plugin. It just lends itself to all kinds of different applications. Some of them really simple, straightforward and clean applications like things like advertising and sponsors, but then also way more complicated things that you can do with this if you've already got quite complicated sources set up. So that was Source Switcher. I'm sure you'll all agree really really useful plugin if you like the way i put this video across to you if you're enjoying the content don't forget to subscribe to the channel i'd appreciate it have a great day take care